Good morning and welcome to Winnipeg. Now, we are later this morning, at least with the clunk, but I've actually been here at the model table for about three hours. It took me a lot longer to solder these up than I thought it would, but we are ready to go. I put a plug on there about, oh, 20 minutes ago. And I was going to screw in the light bulbs and plug it in and try it out, but I thought, hey, I'll, I'll do it on camera just for the fun of it. You'll see it for the first time. I've uh, checked the polarity and so on, uh, not only for, for a safety reason, but I could be wrong, but I don't think these LED light bulbs will work if the polarity is reversed. Unless that's maybe just on the, the little individual LED bulbs that you use, like with a flashlight battery. Uh, it could be there's some sort of rectifier thing going on inside the bulb and it'll work either way. I don't know. I've never tested it. That'd be kind of fun. Maybe I will sometime. Just, just to see. Will it work either way? Anyway, I wanted to get it right because I wanted to have the, you know, the ground on the, on the outside, not on the pointy part on the inside. Uh... So, uh, and, and as near as I can tell, I got it right. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to plug it in and, and show you that I can touch the, the, the side and not get a shock just in case I got it wrong. <laughs> I haven't given myself a shock since I was a kid, but when I was a kid and messing around with stuff like this, I probably gave myself a shock 10 times. <laughs> it's amazing I didn't get my fingers burned. It's amazing I'm still alive. <laughs> anyway, we, we are ready to go here. And uh, I want to try and do something model related today. I'm going to set up, drag the spray booth over here and try and get some parts sprayed. And unless, unless we should be looking ahead here, and just see if there's a bunch of little parts maybe we could do in step 29. Uh, uh, we'll leave 29 for 29. Okay. Oh, Corey got his medal Yamato. It, he got it yesterday in the mail. So that that's pretty good. I think it was uh, uh, 10 days ago we, we mailed it. And he got it yesterday in uh, in uh, L.A., Los Angeles. Um, and if you remember, Corey's the viewer who is, actually lives only 40 miles uh, from the real Yamato. I mean, <laughs> I mean Iowa. Uh, so uh, <laughs> he better not live 40 miles from the real Yamato. He'd be kind of wet. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, that that was. Uh, Pretty pretty good mail service. I you know I didn't send it any special delivery or anything like that. I just yeah. So I can't can't complain. Uh, maybe our postal system is getting back to normal. Uh, anyway, let me just uh, clean up here, uh, recompose, and uh, uh, oh, I should show you uh, a, a couple of pictures that Corey sent. Uh, I'll, I'll show them to you right now. Corey gave me permission to uh, to show you that. So uh, okay. Oh, and he's planning on uh, snapping pictures as he as he builds the thing. And uh, Corey, if you're listening, be sure and put your macro lens and get right in there so we can see that you got rid of all the flashing. <laughs> That's one nice thing about those kids. There's no flashing. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Let's let's get ourselves reorganized here and stop being silly. Okay, we are slowly getting ourselves set up here. Now this piece, I'm going to paint it basically the 19 so it matches the rest of the superstructure parts. And uh, maybe this antenna on the top. Um, I think uh, Tony called it an RDF antenna, Radio Direction Finder antenna. Um, uh, I might paint the top of that black or something, that little round part of it. Um, 
However, everything else I'm going to want to paint the uh, the 66, <clears throat> the darker, so it will blend in with, with other stuff. Uh, for instance, this, this piece here is, is going to be on a part that is, is the 19, so I want, I want it to stand out. So we're going to use the 66, which is slightly lighter. Now, I'm wondering how is it going to be best to hold on to this? It, it might be, instead of using it on the rotator, I might do better to hold it something like this, maybe with one of Chris's uh, alligator clips. And uh, I don't know, I haven't made up my mind yet. However, these, these practice guns, which are also going to be the 66, because they're, they're fairly small. Okay, well, better be careful here how I grab this. Okay. Um, I, I think I will put them on rotating blocks. Okay. And, and the same thing here with our flag locker. Uh, but these ones here. Okay. Now, now these things, uh, they, they plug into the side of the ship, uh, one on each side, and you can probably see the positioning pin there. Uh, I'm having such a hard time not dropping stuff lately. I, I, I'm not squeezing hard enough on the tweezer. Okay, I should maybe start using the self-locking tweezers. Uh, anyway, uh, the only place that does not have to be painted is, is this surface right here where the peg is. Um, and I'm wondering, maybe I might do better to just paint this with a brush rather than try and spray it. Well, we'll, we'll see. It would be nice if I could, you know, m m grab them on something. I wonder if I could... Would Chris's... Uh, let's see, yeah, that, that might work. Just grab onto the peg here. I have to be so careful I don't actually accidentally nip the peg off. Uh, yeah, that that'd work. Yeah, I could I could hold it in my hand and spray it and turn it and spray it. That that'd probably be, be all right. <clears throat> the reason that I was thinking of brushing it is because uh, I probably use a tenth the amount of paint if I brush it, or e even less than a tenth of the amount of paint than if I try to spray it. So and and I'd probably do it in the uh, in the '66. So um, mind you, the weather's getting better, and I can get to the hobby store with the car now. So uh, maybe we should should be stopping worrying about running out of paint and realizing that I can make a trip to the hobby store. Um, starting to think out loud again. Okay, let's continue on here. Okay, now I'm going to be relying on the light green background to help me see how much paint I've got on, on this part right here because I am going to be painting it a color that is almost what it is right now. Now, normally what I would do is I would want something like this just sitting on the pegs, if at all possible. But, like that. But I just know that the air the airbrush is going to shove it over onto the side and rock it back and forth and back and forth. So I may as well stick it down right now and uh, just try and not put it on too heavy on this side where, where it's sticking down because what will happen is it will... Uh, you know, it'll, it will pool in that crack, and then you'll have a sort of a, a build-up of paint along that edge. Not that I can't handle that, but uh, it's just something that I am, you know, a little bit concerned about. Oh, 
Okay, we'll try and stick that peg in that hole. Now these holes I, I made with a, a toothpick, so they're they're fairly big. I wonder, no, I better not grab it with my fingers here. I want to just get it down in that hole if I can. See, I'm afraid if I grab it with my fingers, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to squash the photo etch. Notice how my fingers don't go back to normal. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Let's see what's what's the problem here? Should I maybe be doing this off camera? Okay, I, I don't think that's going to blow off of there. I think it's going there. It's in now. Yeah, it's in now. Okay, let's see if we have better luck with the next one. Yes. Okay, now this one here, I used a pin to make the hole. And the reason I used a pin is because I want a very, very small hole. And uh, hold on to this very, very gently here. Yeah, I don't want to be accidentally putting any stress on the joint. Now that the little peg that's on the bottom of that is is so small that it would actually fall right th right through. Now this is not working out. Very gently now, very gently. Okay, now here's hoping that the airbrush is not going to blow that off of there. I don't think it will. I think it probably will rock back and forth as this is rotating. Just trying to wedge it down the hole. Okay, I think we pretty much got it. Now, uh, I thought I had a... Well, I'm just going to go ahead and make up another... Uh, another block and uh, put our fly blocker on it and then we better get going here now I did shake this up a little while ago in the paint shaker so it's uh, it's probably pretty shook up but I thought I'd just give it one last little shake here it might not be a good idea when I uh, you know, if I was to uh, put it in the airbrush, because you'd be churning up little chunks that maybe you want to have settled at the bottom. Now, I have decided what I'm going to do is, is paint these with the brush. Probably going to take two coats. Okay. Now, try and hold it so that you can see it. I find it really hard to paint something like this, you know, delicately, you might say. Guess I should hold it so you can see it. So I find that it's, it's easier to just sort of, you might say, flood it on and then allow its shrink wrapping uh, properties to... I was going to put the end of the paintbrush in my mouth and then I realized I can't talk if I do that. Oh, 
Oops. This is the sort of thing that our friend Gabe is really good at, painting delicate stuff. He has to be if he's going to be painting those little 1-200 scale, you know, figures like that. Now where the alligator clip is clamped on there down at that bottom part of this, we, we don't, need to, don't need to worry about that because that's going to be up against the side of the superstructure. Okay, I think I basically got it here. Yeah, okay, let's uh, set up now and for our airbrush. Okay, I'll check this after it dries and see if it looks like it needs another coat. It, it may not. Oh, yeah, it may. Okay. I don't think we're going to need our little nozzle cleaned here, but uh, just in case, we're ready. And uh, we are going to paint everything with the darker 66 first. Then I'll be doing a color change. Uh, I don't know if we'll be doing this on camera or not, because it probably takes about 15 minutes to do a, a color change. Um, okay. I, th I think we're pretty much ready to go here. <clears throat> I don't want to, this is the sort of thing I, I can't do another take, so got to get it right the first time. Probably enough, but as I said before, it's it's uh, almost as easy to pour back lots as little. I want to be able to, oh, I've, I've got the airbrush adjusted for about uh, 10, 11 pounds, something like that. Uh, maybe we'll do one of these first. And uh, are we ready to go here? Get our fan going.
this one here is the one we're going to want to be careful with. Don't want to, I don't want to lose the detail. I think that's good actually. I, I don't think uh, I don't think I should try and give it any more. Okay, I'm gonna do a color change. We'll see what happens. We're back. I did the uh, back flushing method. I didn't uh, disassemble the airbrush. And uh, I just back flushed maybe five times. That's about it. It's running clear. And I put in uh, just a little bit of 19. We're not going to need very much for this. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, it's thin enough. When I, when I was putting it in with the, with the uh, pipette, it was looking a little bit on the thick side. But it seems to me I said that before and I didn't do anything about it. So we'll see what happens here. So I'll just uh, move you around again. Okay, at the beginning of the episode I said we'd uh, try these out. And I'm just about finished getting these sockets loaded here with bulbs. And I'm noticing that these sockets are not smooth. It's almost like they should be greased or something. Oh, this one went pretty good. Okay, I'm hoping they all made contact. Alright, let's just... Uh, move this out of the way here for a moment all right yeah you can see all that all right now we've got ourselves a uh, an outlet right here and uh, this is going to be the first time going to be the first time I wonder if we're going to have any duds here Either bad connections or bulbs that don't work. You know, I've I've uh, never had any bulbs like these are. I think these are the Amazon Basics or something. I've never had any that didn't work. Maybe this is going to be the first time because I got record press right. Okay. And here we go. Out of here. Oh, okay. You knew I was going to do that, didn't you? But we got a problem. We got uh, half the bulbs aren't on. Oh. I guess I was just afraid to uh, screw them in all the way. Well, that's good news, I guess. No, this one's not going. Maybe I'll have to uh, unplug it and uh, pull the little thing further out, if you know what I mean. Let's try this one. This one doesn't want to go either. 
Well, I know I got them wired up right, because I checked. In fact, I double checked. So I'll work on this. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. And <laughs> all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I'm back. I just wanted to show you they're all working. Took a little bit of wiggling here, but I got it going. Now we'll see you tomorrow.